The division is a title that actually represents the way the map is divided, at least in the beta. There were two sections, the single player world where you complete missions and side missions, and the dark zone where you compete for loot. Both sections are located in Manhattan, a New York City borough. The city has been overrun by a viral pandemic killing hundreds, maybe thousands of people and forcing the evacuation of thousands of others. You are part of the division, a group created by the government meant to stop the outbreak. You can see how bad things are with wrecked cars filling intersections, heavily secured quarantine zones, pedestrians coughing and staggering as they walk, and landmark buildings turned into hospitals or ravaged by criminals. Other areas are too contaminated to walk through without a mask, and dead bodies can be found scattered on streets or in body bags in unsecured government perimeters. Manhattan is clearly in ruins, but you never feel the effects. The city is stagnant. You can see, you can touch, but you can't change anything. And nothing changes you. You can't get the virus, not because you're immune, but because Ubisoft didn't implement any way the disease could affect you or any way you could beat it. It's like you're walking through an interactive history museum about redwood trees when the premise of the story is far heavier. If you come in contact with the virus in a contaminated area, for example, you'll die and respawn as if nothing happened. Perhaps in the final version, we'll see a much dire consequence of this virus on us as the player, but the beta doesn't give much hope. There's little reason to free roam either. Ubisoft did a great job recreating side streets, alleyways, and smaller areas that excite your curiosity, but there's no loot to collect. Survivors are all around Midtown Manhattan, but only the ones that attack you are few and far between. Some pedestrians will give you loot in exchange for a health pack or water, but they don't give you loot that makes you want to look for these people. An unknown lady may tip you off to random events that may score you more loot, but in at least 8 hours of free roaming, this happened once. I'm hoping because it was a beta. Sometimes you'll come across intel, which gives you information on key characters, and you have to follow a trail to secure it. You may also find echo recordings, which are audio recordings accompanied by holographic three-dimensional stills you can interact with. These give interesting information on events that occur between factions and rioters or other events specific to locations around the map. But none of these events happened often enough to fill the overall emptiness of the city. I understand the general wasteland aspect, but the lack of just plain stuff to pick up in a map that looks so fun to pick apart is odd. It's better to focus on the dedicated missions. In the beta, there's one story-based mission, several side missions, and encounters. The story mission took me inside a severely damaged Madison Square Garden where I killed people, looted, reached the roof, killed an elite boss, and earned more loot. The process was fun, especially on the harder difficulty, and you're likely to score decent loot every time you replay the mission. Thankfully, you could pair it with strangers online, and I never found a group that didn't welcome my presence. Side missions aren't as grandiose and the loot isn't consistently as great, but you get a good amount of XP and currency. Side missions mostly consisted of rescuing hostages, which meant shooting more people. Another four-part side mission focused on following a trail of echo communications. It was mildly interesting, but I have a feeling a bulk of these side missions will be very similar, and if that's the case, it would be extremely disappointing. However, the encounter side missions hold more weight. Participating in these missions determine how you want to move down your skill tree. Your safe house has three wings, medical, tech, and security. You have to add stations to these wings if you want to upgrade a skill tree. For example, if you want to go down the medical skill tree, you have to earn medical points. You earn medical points by finishing medical encounter missions. When you have enough points, you could add stations which allow you to unlock another skill. The thing is, you only have two skill slots, so you're not forced to complete them. You also have the option to unlock extra abilities on your skills, and they're interchangeable, so you're not stuck with the mod you choose. It's a nice system to experiment with, and since you can't make the skills stronger, it's a fair system. Of course, in order to finish any of these missions, you have to engage in combat. It's the elephant in the room. Let's get this clear. Enemies take a lot of damage. Let me rephrase that, humans take a lot of damage. But you can't go into this game expecting enemies to fall immediately when this is an RPG. However, if your mind cannot suspend disbelief because you've been conditioned to expect humans to die quickly with real weapons, I don't blame you. It is what it is. If you could get past that though, 
I think the combat is enjoyable. It's a third person shooter with sticky cover. One innovation has been made. When you highlight another wall, you can hold the button or key to move directly to that position instead of coming out of cover, and then moving to that position. It's the first time I've seen it in a third person shooter, but if it's already been done, I'm glad Ubisoft adapted it. In cover, there is a lot of pop and shoot moments. Enemies did a good job of throwing grenades to force me to move around, but most times I could stay put. If you're playing with more players, there's more freedom to move because the enemy is distracted. A common loot drop from dead enemies are weapons, and there seems to be a healthy amount. The weapons are ones found in most military-inspired shooters. Marksman weapons, assault rifles, pistols, LMGs, shotguns, etc. They all have certain stats and abilities that separate them from each other. I was very satisfied with what I found. They don't feel exceptionally great or sound incredibly good, but I still had fun popping shots in the baddies. Another form of loot is modifications. Basically attachments. These really add the dynamic to your gun. Modifications are the reason why you might find a stronger base gun, but the gun you modified is stronger. But depending on the gun, you could take the mods off your current gun and put them on the new gun and make that stronger. Many guns, mods, and armor come with extra perks called talents. One example is, give extra damage when enemies are below 30% health. Character loot also has other perks such as give plus 98 health, give extra critical hit chance, or increase headshot damage percentage. They can also affect character attributes. Your character has stamina, firepower, and electrician. Firepower increases the strength of your gun, and stamina increases your health. What the electrician does wasn't really made clear in the beta. There's a lot of ways to mix and match mods and weapon types, and when you mix in the attributes, choosing weapons and armor gets tricky. Do you keep the armor that is stronger but decreases your stamina, or do you stick with your weaker armor that increases your stamina? Thankfully, a good chunk of loot drops consistently, and it's not uncommon to find loot that's stronger, but the best way I received loot was repeating the Madison Square Garden mission, not the Dark Zone. The Dark Zone is the PvP area of the game. Running the Dark Zone by yourself is not recommended at all. You're an easy target, and you'll likely lose any good loot you have. Playing the Dark Zone by yourself places you in a gameplay loot that isn't suited for one player. The biggest problem is there isn't enough AI to kill, and there's not enough to loot. So how are you supposed to get loot? Kill other players. But most players are running in teams. So you can make contact with another team, but you'll likely get blasted. If you do engage, you're disavowed from the division and you're considered rogue. There is no upside for going rogue. Once you're rogue, you look like an enemy to everyone else, so people are more likely to come after you. And by going rogue and dying, you lose Dark Zone points, which is the currency of the Dark Zone. And you lose loot. And the more often you go rogue, your chances of losing more loot and Dark Zone points increases. There is a cooldown timer once you go rogue, but if you're successfully killing people, you stay rogue longer. You also get a bounty over your head, so if you successfully survive the cooldown timer, you'll collect that bounty. But you're a target, you have a lot of loot, and then you have to extract it out by yourself? The bounty is not a great upside. If you do have a team and you have loot, extracting your items is thrilling. All loot in the dark zone is contaminated, so you have to call in a helicopter at extraction zones indicated on the map to have the division pick it up and decontaminate it. The process takes two and a half minutes. It takes two minutes for the chopper to get to your location, then you have 30 seconds to put your loot on the hook so the division can extract it out. Once you fire your flare and the timer starts, everyone knows you're extracting. A convenient marker is also placed on the map and screen oh, so yeah, people know where you're extracting. As stressful as that sounds, a lot of people ignore it. But in the moment, you don't know. I've had people walk by my extraction point, I've sat in others' extraction points. It's really nerve-wracking. And it's a sigh of relief when you successfully get your loot out. But sadly, matchmaking the Dark Zone isn't as welcome as matchmaking for story missions, so nabbing awesome loot was nearly impossible. Because again, there's not enough AI to kill or loot crates to open. But running with a squad is fun, and if you could do that, then the Dark Zone is worth it. I like where Ubisoft is taking the division, but I know that what you see here is likely what you'll get in March. Looting is the strongest aspect of the game without question. Combined with the skills and combat, your brain's sweet tooth should be satisfied. My concerns are the mission structures and playing single player in the Dark Zone. 
I can imagine side missions will get very repetitive, and we haven't seen what happens from story mission to story mission. With the Dark Zone, they need to find a way to help people who don't have a team. A way to party up right there on the map, a better messaging system, something. Not everyone can play with a team every time, and if the best loot is in the Dark Zone, there must be a way to get it with or without a team. The escort party's taking heavy fire from the roof. They can't move until you get up there and...